Welcome to Help with Homework for Kids. This is a small example of the types of things you'll find on our Reading and Writing for Older Kids DVD. The DVD has been designed for children aged between 8 and 13. Over many years of trialling different ways of teaching writing, I have found that the best method is to focus on one part at a time and I'm going to give you detailed instructions on how to do this in the narrative genre. And then you'll be able to apply this process to all the genres that your child is writing in. A narrative is a story and it is usually fiction. That means it is made up and not necessarily true. There are many different types of narratives, including fantasy, romance, science fiction, myths, legends, picture books, and fairy tales. There are three parts to a narrative, the orientation or the introduction, the problem or the middle part where tension builds, and the resolution where the story resolves itself or the problem is solved. First of all, help your child to brainstorm and plan their story. They need to know what is going to happen at the end before they start writing. There is a graphic organiser in the ebook to help with this process. Start off with the title. Now this should grab the reader's attention and let the reader know what the story is going to be about. The first part of a narrative is the orientation. This can also be called the beginning or introduction of the story. This is where the author sets a scene and the mood of the story. The main characters are usually introduced here and an orientation usually answers the questions of who, what, where and when. Now your child may need some guidance during this section. Often children will focus on the who, what, where and when and it can sound very boring. For example, Tom and John rode their bikes to Coolan Beach for a swim on Sunday at 12 o'clock. Now here the child has answered all of those questions who, what, where and when but it sounds very boring. Does this inspire you to read on? I don't think so. I rewrote that boring orientation into one that's much more interesting. A drop of sweat splashed onto the handlebars of John's rusty old bike. He grinned at his friend Tom. Coolum Beach looked like something out of one of those fancy tourist brochures. With the midday sun beating down on them, they threw their bikes to the ground and ran screaming across the hot sand. Nothing and I mean nothing, was going to stop them from diving into the cool blue water. Now this orientation isn't boring. It still gives the same information, but it sets the mood to the story. You can imagine how the boys are feeling. I could have said that the boys felt hot, but that wouldn't be as effective as a drop of sweat splashed onto the handlebars, or they ran screaming across the hot sand. So if your child writes a boring orientation, you can help them by brainstorming some ideas with them, talking to them about how they'd feel in the situation that they've got in their story. What would the scene look like? What is the main character actually doing? You can ask lots of questions like this to get your child to really feel the story. If your child is stuck for an idea, they could try some of these interesting beginnings. Maybe a character speaking, a sound effect, or they could ask a question. Write the orientation only. Stop at this point, read it, and talk about ways it could be improved to make it more interesting. Rewrite the orientation until it will grab the reader's attention. Now, children are often quite happy to rewrite a small section of writing, but if you try to get them to do this at the end of their story, they will not be interested because it's simply too much to do. Working in small parts like this also helps them to edit their whole story or piece of writing thoroughly. Children often hate to edit and get bored with it. So if they only have to deal with one small part at a time, they're more likely to put more effort into improving their writing and making it more interesting. Now, unfortunately, this is what most children do. If they've got a non-fiction book and you ask them to look something up, they'll actually pick the book up and they'll flick through it looking for the information. 
So these skills are essential for them to become good readers, specifically with non-fiction books. So just say they bought a book home on how does it work and their assignment was to find out how a telephone network works. They've got a couple of options. First of all, they should turn to the front of the book and look at the table of contents.